Hi there, you are watching a video of shell and tube heat exchangers for industrial plants. All loading conditions shall be analyzed prior to any vessel design. The designer must consider the loads during the whole life cycle of the vessel, not only during normal operation. Depending on where the equipment is installed, it will be subjected to different wind speeds and pressures. This information must be provided by the owner of the plant as it depends on the local conditions and legislation. To analyze the wind load that will be acting on a pressure vessel, the cross-section of the equipment must be known, in other words, the resistant area. Depending on the local legislation, different methods will be followed to determine the wind profile as indicated in the figure. When the height of the vessel does not exceed the first height threshold of the wind pressure profile, only the distributed load value is considered as shown in the figure. The wind load F applied at the center of the cross-section area of the equipment will be the wind pressure times the cross-section of the vessel. The greatest value of each acting wind load needs to be determined for horizontal vessels. In this case, a transverse force and a longitudinal force could be acting on the vessel depending on the wind direction. Usually, since horizontal vessels are longer than wide, the transverse induced force is greater. Regardless of local applicable legislation, depending on the location of the project, the seismic response of a pressure vessels, in other words, the seismic load that needs to be withstood by a vessel, is determined by the spectrum of accelerations. This spectrum needs to be obtained for each location, and it is a function of the type of the terrain, safety coefficients, dumping of the structure, etc. A spectrum of acceleration is a chart of dumped responses, in other words, the responses that structures will have during a seismic event. The spectrum of accelerations due to an earthquake will be different for each site and each local regulation to be applied, NCSE, ASCE, UBC, etc. As an example, a spectrum could be as shown on the screen. Prior to obtaining the spectral acceleration of or shear force applied at the base, the natural vibration frequency of the system and period must be known. These parameters must be obtained for each condition to be analyzed. Vacuum, operation, empty, etc. Usually, the operation condition governs the seismic calculations. Once the natural vibration period of the system has been calculated, it is necessary to use the spectral acceleration curve and obtain the shear at the base. This is the response that a pressure vessel will have in a seismic event in a specific location. For example, let's suppose that the system has a natural period of vibration of 0.5 seconds. This value is then entered in the curve and it is observed that the spectral acceleration for this equipment it is 0 0.143 Gs. This means that the system will be subjected to a horizontal shear force at base which 
which will be equivalent to 0.143 times its operating weight or vertical vessels supported by legs or horizontal equipment supported on saddles and many others. Loads described are not applied as standalone conditions. They act combined. For example, the own weight of the vessel will always be present. The wind load or seismic loads should be added if applicable as previously mentioned. Load combinations should be analyzed for each project according to the requirements of the process and external loads, wind, earthquake, hydrostatic tests, transportation, etc. A pressure vessel must be checked for each of these load combinations and these supports will be designed with the worst case of all of the above. Usually, the equipment in operation together with the earthquake requirement is the governing case, case 2, although there are exceptions.